Hear a little, you send it a little bit quiet. Try it again. Uh, okay, you better now? Yeah, but it sounds like you're coming through, uh, your, like, PC mic versus, uh, headset. Hmm, let me take a look at the settings. Any that seems clear. Okay. It looked, didn't look like it was using the headset for some reason. All right. Well, let's see. What is going on now? Um, unfortunately, I'm, I'm going to give you a bunch of cool stuff coming soon uh, announcements here. Um, one thing is that, uh, as you know, we've been working on the Animesh Land Impact stuff for a while. Uh, have a proposed formula and have a test plan for that. Um, some folks on the QA side are going to be helping with uh, running through that and making sure that everything works as intended. Um, that all, uh, you know, goes according to plan. Then. We will deploy that onto all of the uh, Animesh test regions, and uh, uh, at that point, we'll also do a write-up explaining what all of the uh, what all of the settings are. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Bix on Mesh also coming very soon. Um, uh, Anchor has a. Uh, spiffy project viewer that's been going through some some QA. Um, there's still a couple of jeers they're trying to get sorted out there, but uh, uh, I'm hopeful that that will also be going out as an official project viewer soon. Um, when that goes out, that will that should work everywhere since there's no uh, simulator side changes. So you should be able to play around with that and choice once the viewer is out. Um, if you're using an older viewer that doesn't support Bakes on Mesh, then you're going to see some uh, you know, kind of uh, placeholder textures um, in place of the fake textures on Yeah. Uh, no, let's see. Sorry. Should should be very soon, though. Um... Let's see, what else do we have? I guess those are the main uh, upcoming things. Uh, there's also some work going on right now about a JIR that I don't recall the number of offhand, but the um, request there was to add the ability to uh, add uh, custom pivot points for uh, mesh objects and uh, so that is also being worked on. I think when that's done, that'll be going out on one of the main viewers. It's not part of, uh, of Animesh or Bakes on Mesh, but uh, I've seen some discussion about it. I know it's underway. Yep, thank you. I added that to our internal Jira. Yeah, uh, I'm not positive where we're getting the pivot points. It's it's something inside the uh, DAE's, um, you know, the the corresponding value for the high LOD, but uh, I'm not sure exactly what field that's based on. Yeah, but the the it's important to note the 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 pivot point needs to be inside the bounding box of the of the object, and that that ends up acting as that that ends up being the thing around which the object will rotate when it's, for example, um, when it's in world. Yeah, I. I I think if the pivot point is not inside, I think the pivot point is also treated as the object center, right? So if it's right. not inside the bounding box, then it'll mess up the LOD calculations. Uh, among other things, right? Uh, let's see.
You guys want to run this one? Yeah, I don't think we want the uh, bounding box to be getting resized. I think that was just an unintended effect. I was doing that at one point. You know, generally you want the bounding box to be accurate. For one thing, if it's wrong, then it, uh, it hoses the whole LOD calculation process. Yeah, I, I don't have, uh, unfortunately, a lot of details on this one. I've seen some of the discussion going by on the JIRA, but I haven't actually looked at the code. Uh, Oz, do you have any uh, announcements for this week, or Alexa, or anybody else? Nothing from me. Uh, nothing new. We're just going through reviewing our list of outstanding issues and trying to burn what we can and get those taken care of. Um, working with Mazadox uh, for testing, so we're chugging along. Yeah, we had a good discussion today on what are the, you know, must fix for for release, uh, for initial release issues, uh, especially on the server side. Um, so, you know, the the likely scenario is that this will be available for testing in some regions on Agni. Um, you know, before we've got um, before we've addressed all of the uh, viewer side issues. So, you know, you'll be able to take the existing project viewer and stuff on Agni. Basically, once we've finalized the, the simulator side things, like actions, behavior is correct, and all. Let's see, uh, all right, or anything new on EEP? I'm still getting the uh, some of this infrastructure out of the way, um, which I hope to have soon. When we when we have that, I can start. Uh, I I can uh, get back to uh, having the assets in inventory. Sounds cool. Uh, Lucy, I don't, I don't know that I have a specific amount of time. It'll be on a DD. I mean, you know, given the way the process works, there's always going to be uh, some amount of lag, so that people will have some, some time to exercise things. Do you have a concern about needing a particular amount of time, or, or just, uh, just wondering in general? Yeah, well, it probably does make sense to have it out for, uh, you know, at least a period of a few days to give people an opportunity to give feedback. We have, we have uh, lots of experience with the fact that uh, you folks have a tendency to find things that need to be improved, um, and we want to give you plenty of time to do that. So, yeah, and we like to break as much as we can before you guys start breaking things. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, let's see, there's a question about plans to work on the permission system. Uh, we definitely are not in a hurry to work on the permission system in general because it's kind of a horror show. Um, but, you know, it does happen from time to time. We, we do have a project that's, uh, you know, in the queue, well, it doesn't have a definite, uh, you know, scheduled, um, you know, plan for exactly where it fits in there, uh, which is the, uh, you know, kind of extending the ability to do scripted permissions for more complicated things. This is the don't call it mod keys, um, you know, to, to uh, basically give, give people finer grained ability to, uh, Make some types of changes without having to kind of give the whole uh, give the whole store away and just you know say everything is full perm or whatever. Um, so that that's definitely something that we're convinced needs to be looked at, but we don't know exactly when that's going to be coming along. Um, I think that you know if we do make any changes to permissions, that would uh, that would probably be the next thing in line. I, I think it's been longer than that, Polly, so. It, it, that's a topic that has been discussed fairly often, which is, which is a, often a precursor to our making a plan. Um, we haven't quite gotten to the making a plan stage with it, but we're certainly aware of some of the some of the things that are made difficult by the current situations. No. I mean, that, that said, I don't think we have any specific plans to, um, you know, tackle the, the kinds of things they're currently doing in Sansar. It does, uh, it does seem like a very cool kind of capability, being able to have this kind of, uh, you know, nested aggregation uh, thing. I have a question, um, and I apologize to everybody if this has already been explained um, over and over, but um, when it comes to the LOD settings, um, are you changing that for Animesh? Are you fixing? Like, I don't understand what is going on with the LOD and how it will affect current content in world. Uh. Well, basically, we have some some known bugs with the way that LODs are handled in Animesh. Um, we're going to try to, uh, you know, fix those or at least make them less numerous um, before it goes live. Um, and uh, you know, the the intent is that with Animesh, we want to treat it the same as uh, other objects for purposes of LOD calculations. Um, currently, it's kind of animations are kind of cheating because they are getting a bump in um, being having the higher LOD shown more often because they're getting treated the same as avatars. But you know they're really not. They should be getting the same treatment as other objects in the scene. Try to address. Okay, so for clarification, um, the changes to the, the LOD um, stuff in the Firestorm viewer, and forgive me, I don't use the um, Second Life viewer, so I'm, I'm going to assume that it's in there too, um, and the discussions of the LOD in this group, they're totally separate in things, correct? Uh, sorry, I'm not, I'm not quite following all of that. Which which are separate things? Um, uh, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Um, okay, the F Firestorm viewer has um, uh, stuff in it uh, where you can look at the LOD factor and, and somewhat change it or correct it or something like that. And, yes, in the build tool, yes. And um, I was just wondering if that LOD stuff is separate from the LOD discussions in this group. Because if I'm confused, the general population is going to be confused. Uh, 
I guess basically what I'm getting at is, is there going to be any LOD major changes live and world that is going to affect current content? Right. Uh, I don't think there should be anything that affects current content. The um, primarily an extraction to back end. Uh, I I was under the impression that the changes in Firestorm were more for diagnostic purposes to make it easier to see what the different LODs in a model look like. Is that uh, is that a fair statement? We would then republish that. Yeah. It it, it would be. Um, you know, we, we would definitely be interested in incorporating uh, those kinds of changes, uh, you know, if we had a, um, uh, you know, if we had a, a you know, code, code submission on that. Um, but uh, in any case, um, the changes that we're looking at for Animesh right now are basically fixes for the way that we do LOD swapping of Animeshes themselves. Um, we're not we're not making any intentional changes to the treatment of other um okay thank you oh yeah i think uh, firestorm did um has been doing a little bit to sort of throttle down the very high values for um for render volume lod which uh which could uh could affect how some things get displayed if you've got objects with kind of unfortunate low LEDs. And of course if you if you do see changes in the Animesh project viewer that affect LEDs that we're not aware of, then uh, you know please bring them up, file a Jira, whatever. Yep. Yeah, no, I'll probably step back. I, I understand. It's, um, you know, if there's a change, it's to the, you know, perceived, uh, you know, what what you see in the view rather than what's actually in the in the model data. And, and I, I do understand why you're doing that. It makes a lot of sense. And uh, the, you know, the tendency to try to crank everything up to always show the highest LOD obviously is is one of the worst problems from a performance standpoint. That and uh, texture is not caching right. I understand that no actual content is being um, changed on server side. I, I understand that part. I was merely talking about, um, I'm just merely wondering um, how content creators need to change things with the upcoming changes is all I was wondering about. With regards to rigging, cl uh, rigged clothing, rigged stuff. Uh, I think content creators would be, you know, very well advised to try to make good lower LODs for their models. Um, you know, that's that's going to give the you know best appearance with the best performance. Is the changes in the bugs to the calculation going to possibly help lower the cost of uploads for Mesh? The the intent is that. We will change the changes we make to upload costs and to land impact costs and, and, and anything else um, will be designed to incentivize the creation of good quality content. And that includes uh, incentivizing creating good low mod models for, for complex objects. Um, we're we're making progress on that project uh, of figuring out how we can how we can do that, uh, but it's um, as as your concern illustrates, 
that's that's a process that has a lot of potential pitfalls in it, and we're trying to be very, very careful. Um, we're doing some experiments now with alternative calculations, and we're going to be running some big data collection experiments where we try to, um, yeah, judicious is exactly the word, where we're going to try to say, we're going to try to run multiple calculations at the same in parallel and say okay this is the existing calculation this is what the effect of the new calculation would be this is um, this is how they differ um, it's it is probably inevitable that the cost of some things will go up um, and that will obviously be upsetting um, it will it's it's our intent that um, good efficient content will not go up um, but we're going to try and do this in a way that creates good incentives uh, right now you can for example lower the upload cost by simply not having low lot models um, that's the wrong incentive we don't want that incentive to be there right um, right well, Whatever we do will apply to everything. Um, and the cost is, I think, the major factor as to why people zero out the LODs and the mesh uploader in the first place so they don't have that huge cost. Um, regardless of whether the item is, you know, um, 10,000 polygons or not, or higher. Right. Um, so um, that's, I guess, the major concern for um, content creators is the, the cost of the upload. And we are uh, starting to address this topic a bit um, with the uh, with the land impact formula for Animesh in particular. Um, as I, I think we've talked about this a, a few times at previous meetings, but uh, the way that the cost scheme is going to work for uh, for Animesh objects, um, you know, for assessing the the streaming cost, is that the um, uh, is that the lower LODs. Uh, you know, won't increase your cost unless they're kind of disproportionately large. So basically, as long as your LODs get smaller, uh, you know, as, as you go to the coarser LODs, um, so, you know, by at least a factor of two, um, you're not going to be paying any extra for those LODs. They're not going to increase your streaming cost at all. So uh, hopefully that's at least one small way to, um, you know, at least avoid discouraging people from making good LODs. Um, you know, we do want to address things like the mesh upload cost uh, as well, but that's not, uh, we're not tackling that uh, with, with the first Animesh release. Yeah, any change to the to the, any any general change to the calculation of land impact is uh, to things other than animesh objects um, is is not going to be done coincident with the with the animesh release. It'll be a, it's a separate project. It will happen at a different time. Um, in in terms of whether or not it will cause um, object returns. Um, Obviously, we're, we, we really don't want to do something that's going to cause significant amounts of content to get returned. That, that, would, be, that would be really bad. Um, we don't want to do that. Uh, if, we, if we change the, if we find that the only way to make uh, land impact costs accurately reflect the incentives we want them to reflect, means that we need a different range of numbers, um, we will look at what we would need to do to change the uh, land impact allowances to allow a reasonable range of numbers. Now, it's, it's not possible for us to guarantee that nothing is going to get returned. It's, we're going to try to do that in a way that there's ample opportunity for users to understand what the effect of any change is going to be and make adjustments before anything's going to be returned. So we'll, we'll experiment with that um, a lot uh, and we'll, we'll be paying a great deal of attention to the potential for causing harm um, and, and trying to avoid it. 
Um, so it's still too early in the process for us to, to, to get to the point where we can tell you exactly how it's going to go. We will before it happens. Um, we're not going to spring this on you. That's why we have this meeting, among others. Uh, just to clarify, when I say cost, I'm not talking about the land impact cost because for rigged mesh, I don't care about that. Um, because it's not resed on the ground, typically you you know you're wearing, and I'm talking about just the upload cost cost um, in general. Right, upload costs will the, the calculations for upload cost are liable to change. Um, it's way too early for us to predict how. Okay, thank you. Certainly, we 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 will typically not provide, we don't want it to be true that we have upside down incentives. And in some cases, we do have upside down incentives right now. We actually have, you can make the upload cost go down by doing things that we think, broadly speaking, lower the quality of the content. And we, we don't want that to be true. So we're gonna, we're gonna try to fix that. Um, but if you're doing good high quality content now that's properly rigged or is, you know, using a reasonable number of triangles, it's taking advantage of uh, normal maps to do um, surface detail as opposed to modeling that detail in, in zillions of extra triangles. Um, if you're doing good low LOD models for things, then our, our intent is that that will cause your costs to improve, not Um, Lucy, I, I would, I, I won't rule out doing some kind of grandfathering calculation. I would strongly prefer not to do that because then, then we've got a, a lot of extra complexity. If, if only in a, 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 it would leave us, yeah, the QA would be would be terrible, and and also it would leave us with. Um, a situation where we have to explain two different ways for things to be figured out. And uh, frankly, I don't think we do a good enough job of explaining how they're figured out now. So uh, making it that much more complicated would, would just be much worse. Another possibility we've talked about is to have some kind of a transitional period. So, um, you know, the, as the formula is, is um, is going to change, you know, there'd be a period where you're going to get notifications about impending returns without things actually getting returned. Yeah. Uh, Liz, I don't, I don't really want to get into all the possibilities that of things that we've been, we've been considering, partly because um, I'm not the only person who's been doing it, and I don't even know what everybody involved has been has been thinking about and not talking to me about. So um, it's, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna be spending a lot of time on a lot of different alternatives and doing a lot of experiments. We're going to be spending money to do experiments on this. We're going to send things off to have people do lots of measurements for us. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. No, no. We're glad you think spending money is a good thing. If you want to spend any money on land and Second Life, oh, but it is. Or in the marketplace. Uh, no, that's not why there's no money for mirrors. So, so when are we going to get the numbers on Animesh? Uh, real soon now. But basically, I'm I'm just waiting on getting some QA eyeballs on uh, in in some test regions that we have running internally. Um, 
if if everything checks out there, then uh, you know we'll be we'll be moving the uh, we're bringing that formula over to all of the NMesh test regions, and at that point, I'll also do a forum post explaining what our uh, what our values are. And of course, we'll discuss it at content creators when uh, when it's ready to discuss as well. You know, I, I think broadly speaking, what you can expect, um, you know, as, as we mentioned, the formula, like for land impact, it's going to be based on triangle count and doesn't incorporate, uh, you know, prim scale the way that the cost for static meshes does, which means that, um, you know, for larger objects, uh, you know, anim meshes are going to tend to be cheaper, and for smaller objects, um, you know, static meshes are going to tend to be cheaper. I think at the in the sort of sweet spot of you know roughly human-sized objects, um, they should generally be in in roughly the same ballpark, which is to say that the number is going to be exactly the same. But just that I don't think you're going to you know on average see a huge discrepancy. But um, you know, again, we'll uh, you'll be able to see the specifics once we uh, go live with it. You don't think that uh, if the score is, is smaller for Animesh that people will just make their things Animesh <laughs> just to get a lot lower score? Oh, uh, that's that's totally not a thing that could ever happen. Uh, well, that's that that's a question. Um, I I think that you know it, it's not going to be possible to do that for attachments certainly since. Um, uh, since you can only have one Animesh attachment, um, I'm not sure how much of the world it really consists of, uh, you know, static mesh objects that aren't on avatars these days, which, you know, would be the only thing that would potentially change as a result of, of that kind of a... I'm thinking uh, more of like, uh, I mean, you could build a house out of Animesh and do all the windows and doors with uh, bones, and uh, if you got a lower score, that'd be a big bonus. <laughs> Suffice to say that we spend a fair amount of time talking about how users might game any given change that we are contemplating. Um, that That is... Is a frequent topic of conversation. Oh, it doesn't matter what you do, what limits you set. Um, you have a world full of creators. They're going to break your stuff, and they're going to, yeah, do yeah, things with your was. software that you don't even think of. <laughs> Makes me wonder if uh, we're, we can't get features in Sansar because of this very reason. <laughs> Uh, we're we're not going to discuss what you might or might not ever get in Sansar, but um, I mean, you know that this whole this whole process of revision and interaction with the with the content creators in Second Life is really part of what makes this job so much fun. You need to pass that along to the Sansar team then. <laughs> I would think we're a big pain in the butt, but um, so you can only have one Animash attachment. That kind of saddens me a little bit, I guess, because um, uh, Animash dresses instead of flexi dresses would be nice. Um, and speaking of Animash hair, a long time ago I asked about that and Actually, somebody took a, um, a bento bone, uh, leg hind leg bone, and moved it up to the head and used and animated that for the animated hair. Yep, well, it's definitely a thing you could do. And, of course, if you had animesh hair, then you've got the full skeleton available to you. So um, you could you could do even more extensive stuff. Uh, on the other hand, you've got the problem that the animations aren't really synchronized. So um, it, I think it's going to be harder to keep your hair, uh, you know, kind of synced up with what your body's doing. Customers don't really care too much about that. I mean, they're walking around with badly rigged clothing.
Yeah, so, I mean, the motivation, obviously, for, for having a limit on Animesh attachments is is performance. Um, you know, people are especially enthusiastic about, uh, you know, putting lots of, of uh, you know, high-quality or high-detail content on their avatars. And, um, you know, if, if they could do 38 Animesh attachments, they a lot of them probably would. Um, but that would also generate a, a whole lot of lag. <laughs> So yeah, at least for now we're you know we're we're shooting for uh, for one and then uh, you know see where that where that takes us. Let's see, I see anchors here. Anchor, we were talking a little bit about uh, status of Bix on Mesh. Um, I, I told people that. Uh, it was in QA and uh, you know a couple bugs left to fix and then we were hoping to get a uh, project viewer out soon. Uh, anything else you want to say or does anybody have questions for Anchor? Um, yeah, we're like we're fixing some final QA issues uh, on the Bix and Mesh project. It's I mean it's looking good so far. Um, so hopefully next week you guys can test. Um, like I'll make a video next week and then you guys can test it. Uh, it's it's looking good so far. Uh, that's all I have to say. Um, so basically, like when you apply a big on one of your mesh faces, it's gonna hide the the like corresponding base mesh region. That that's how you're gonna um, blow up your LL body. Um, that's how it's gonna work. Uh, It'll make more sense when you test it next week. Oh, I hope so. But <laughs> what if um, it's not a full body? What if it's a jacket? Um. Yeah, we. So uh, yeah, um, I don't think that's gonna work. Like right now, um, we talked about this. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, I mean, you're not hiding the the whole body. You're hiding the different body regions, right? So if if somebody if somebody uses the baked head texture on a mesh, then you hide the head, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, so there's you, like so you can head, hide yeah. different portions of your. Oh. Uh, so it's, it's not it's not finer grained. Like you you can't hide just your hands or something like that, but. But you can hide the sort of the, the coarse regions that the avatar has, the, the regions that correspond to the different bakes. I will hold off commenting till we see it. <laughs> Yeah, I think we can have a better discussion about this once it's actually out there and people can uh, play around with it. Uh, you know, we're not ruling out the possibility that there may be more work on this. This is just a, you know, initial uh, initial implementation so we can start to get feedback. Rumor that we're getting rid of the standard SL avatar. Um, and we would be unlikely to, uh, you know, kill everybody's standard avatars if they, you know, wanted to continue using them. Generally, we try to give people more options rather than fewer. We we do appreciate hear, hearing about the rumors, though. It's it's a lot of fun. My experience has been that um, anytime there's a new feature, it's always deeply considered about breaking existing content. That's the that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest concern. Um, so. You know, um, when somebody tells you, oh, they're going to get rid of standard avatars, you know, you could say, well, that's existing content, and London Lab would probably never do that, and unless, you know, maybe 40 years from now, but not anytime soon.
you know, there are cases like um, Invisiprims, you know, once once there was a better way to make parts of your avatar invisible, and as the, you know, as we as we had a, uh, a you know, a different renderer that didn't really have the capability to support those, you know, we did basically phase out support for those, so, you know, it's, it's not like there's an across the board, you know, stuff never gets broken rule, but we are, we are very judicious about it. Uh, we don't like to break things if we have a better alternative. So do we have an ETA on these, um, or, or some kind of time frame around these uh, land impact changes? Definitely not. Um, we we don't even have an ETA for that internally, much less externally. Yeah, QA can be anything from, you know, everything looks great, chip it, to, uh, gee, I discovered the following half dozen bugs that you have to, you know, go off and spend a long time fixing. So it, uh, it doesn't really narrow the date range down as much as one would like. I feel pretty good when we get it down to a half dozen. Is anyone else seeing my cat go gray every f so often? You just zoom in closer. I'll take a look for a bit and see if it changes. Doesn't uh, doesn't look that way to me right now. Like all of a sudden, it would just go. I mean, I, I, of course, we have tons of texture recaching here, but. Um, yeah, it was strange. Now, Veer, I heard you talking about that issue with texture caching. Is there any kind of resolution coming on that? Uh, as, I, as I heard, uh, I, was okay, talking. Yeah, I don't think I was talking about texture caching. We're, we're doing a, a bunch of experiments with improving the texture caching in the viewer. Uh, it turns out that it's um, it's been an extremely educational process to experiment with it. We've done a couple of different versions. Um, some of them made the performance better. Some made the performance worse. Um, we're, we're learning quite a lot in the process. Uh, it, is, it is my personal belief that there's room for dramatic improvement uh, and I'm going to keep trying to spend engineering time looking at it until I see dramatic improvement um, but that having been said it it's not the sort of thing that's a top priority project it can't be because there's pretty much always something more urgent to do. So we spend some time on it, and then we sometimes have to put it on the back burner in favor of fixing a big bug or helping somebody with a with getting a, an important big feature out the door, uh, and then we get back to it. So lately, there's been quite a bit of progress on it. Um, I'm very encouraged that, that at some point we will have something that's significantly better than what we have now. Uh, but I, I wouldn't venture a guess as to when that's going to be. Well, I'm very happy it was brought up. Uh, it seems like a, a big issue I've seen for a very long time. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, it's early on in my tenure here, we discovered that the the code that was caching textures was using a different naming scheme than the code that was trying to read the, the textures back out of the cache and we essentially had a 100 percent cache miss rate um, we're we're doing much better than that right now 
um, but we're also uh, we also think we can do better than what we're doing right now. Um, so uh, it's uh, we've 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 taken a couple of new tacks uh, on the problem, and yeah, it it still worked. Um, uh, it's also it's also worth noting that the implementation environment we have is is um, really wide, right? We have people who have really old slow disks and um, but fabulous network connections, and we have people who have really janky, terrible network connections, but screaming fast solid state drives and Figuring out what the right combination of optimizations is is, um, I mean, we've actually done some experiments where, for some users, just disabling the cache makes their performance better. Um, that's obviously not the normal case, but it's it's not impossible to construct that case. Um, <laughs> yeah, one of the things we we have done is put better better um, Texture cache, better better texture cache identifier, so that if we change the texture cache it, format or an organization, it will it will recognize that fact and not try to read an old cache using the new form. That wouldn't work really well. So we've made some of those changes in advance, and uh, uh, and and we think we we think there's. Plenty of room for improvement, and we'll, we'll find it. I really kind of think that if we could fix that texture caching thing, we might be able to do better VR in second line. There, there are a bunch of. There are a bunch of other things that we think need attention before we get to that. I'm not going to rule out trying that again at some point in the in the future, but it's it's not on the short term roadmap. There's just too much other stuff to do. There was a question uh, above about locking your mesh body in place, essentially replacing your SL body. I, I'm not sure if I understand the question there. I mean, you can already make your SL body invisible and and wear a mesh in in place of it. Um, not I'm not sure if that's what you were shooting for or not. Um, basically, what I was thinking is, when the bake's on mesh, your mesh body will basically use your standard clothing layers and stuff like that have the ability to. Somebody right. who doesn't want to change their mesh body often being able to lock it so when they change outfits, it doesn't change their body. It just, it's like using RLV, but without having to enable the RLV, just being able to lock specific body parts within the viewer itself. Uh, I see what you mean. Yeah, we don't really have the notion of, of locking particular parts of your of your outfit, um, of course you can you can change individual things or not, but um, it's it's um, still depends on you know the particular operation you're doing. Now, now, do we have imposters for Animesh now too? Uh, yeah, Animesh uh, has has spread imposters for a while now. Okay, uh, that, okay, that's exactly what I saw then. Okay. 
Last time we met, we were discussing the possibility for the alpha layers for the bakes on mesh, the regular alpha layers applying to it. Did, did you guys figure out if that's going to happen or not? Uh, alpha layers, they, they're just part of your, like all the variables, right? So they get baked into the server bakes. Well, you can talk more about it. I mean, uh, yeah, I, th I don't know. We've had, we've had a few different discussions about alpha where people are concerned with different aspects. So I'm, I'm not sure if I'm capturing all of what people are, are asking about uh, in those discussions um, you know the the baked you know your baked appearance your baked textures does include any effects of uh, alpha wearables that you have um, which can be used to you know, basically punch holes in your avatar body or or uh, or hide chunks of your avatar body and that stuff should uh, should also apply to you know, attached meshes that that get baked textures applied to them. Um, so, uh, but yeah, once the project viewer is out, which should be fairly soon, um, give it a shot and see if that's what you meant. Okay. Tell you, it's going to be strange uh, being in groups of people and not knowing which are actual people and which are which are animesh. Yeah, well, that is an interesting point. You you can sort of tell if you do something like um, you know enabling the the rendering cost display because the the animesh objects are a different color text than the avatars. I don't know if that's the best way, but it's one way you could tell. Like if you had a performance tool, show avatar complexity information. See the uh, like your like your your snake has has uh, white text and the um, and the cat has yellow text. Yeah, that's true. There's some other UI elements that you also don't have. Oh, wow. Wait, 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 wait. Um, we can now lock our camera on an animesh. Oh, goody. As far as I know, that's, nothing has changed there, but uh, I'm not sure I'd try it. Well, I think it's a it's a great feature because it's real. You know, when you can lock your camera on something and have the camera follow follow it around, and yeah, it wasn't working the whole time. At least I haven't been around that much, but. Today is the first time I noticed it. Oh, huh, okay. Well, I don't know what changed then. If it, it may be that if a, if an animation has displaced an object, you could be visually clicking on it on the screen, but you're but uh, it, it wouldn't necessarily. You you might actually be clicking on the on on the ground behind it, so it would it would make it easy to understand. To, to misunderstand what you were locking to. Madun, are you locking to that uh, semi-transparent uh, pram that you have attached to the cat? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to res something else to make sure that's not it. 
yeah, because that's probably what your camera is locking on to if there is an issue with um, camera locking onto Animesh objects. Right. I haven't been able to lock camera on an Animesh. Okay. You, well, they may be subject to the same kind of constraints that you have with other rigged meshes then. I mean, can you lock camera on to no, uh, like a mesh works. attachment or something? No, it works. Try and lock on that baby. That has no capsule on it. It's not, I don't see it playing any animations yet, so you may be just logged on to the static. Yeah, because oh, well, it might not even be set. Let me see, let me see here. Oh yeah, it's not set. Okay, uh, uh, now. Our baby is being bombarded by selection particles. <laughs> I don't know, it's still working now. It's set to animate. animation. But it's not actually animated, so is it still being treated as a static without the animations running? Oh, uh, one second here. <laughs> I gotta look for my tools. Uh, here we go. Uh, there we go. Now, uh, I should be able to drop an animation in this. If I can find the animation. Uh, Okay, here we go. One more time. Just not the cat animation. There we go. Now it's animated. And I can't lock on it. How come I... I... Is it no. supposed to be moving? Well, it's blowing a kiss, the baby is. I'm not seeing the animation. I'm not the seeing one, the animation either. The one baby's animated and the other one isn't. No, I'm, I'm the one sitting on the yeah. platform. Yeah, I can't oh. lock on to it. I am not seeing okay. any animations for some reason. Well, it just stopped. I don't know why it stopped, but let me see. Let's throw a different one. Ah, okay, I'm in the wrong viewer. <laughs> let me try this one. Yeah. Yeah, so it has the same uh... problem with some rigged meshes where you can't lock on to it. On a rigged avatar. Yeah, a lot of the stuff for selection and and clicking and stuff is is going to be pretty much the same for uh, you know animesh objects as it is for rigged meshes on avatars. Um, but on the same. Is there any thought of what causes that issue with locking onto a rig? Or? Uh, it's probably just that the. The raycast is is set to ignore rigged objects because including rigged objects is a lot slower. Hmm. Well, I guess the solution is to put a capsule around your object. You know? Yeah, the collision volumes are. Uh, or another thing that you can can normally click on. So, at what distance do these imposters kick in? I thought it had more to do with how many uh, how many you know, avatars or animeshes are in the scene. Um, you, know, you can set a limit for max oh, imposters yeah, yeah. or something, oh. or max non imposters. Yeah, because I'm just like just barely zooming out, and that animation on the baby stops. I mean, I'm barely maybe 20 feet from it. My camera. Also, a lot of avatars here. Right, right, right. Yeah, the, the avatars in the animesh objects are all are all basically drawing from the same pool as far as you know getting imposters imposters okay all right well it looks like we're about at time uh let's see we are currently scheduled to meet next week um often we don't have a meeting the first thursday of the month but in this case we uh 
since we don't have a, a conflict, uh, we'll we'll be planning to meet. And then uh, the the meeting that that conflicts is the second Thursday. So uh, I think that's consistent with what we've got in the uh, schedule online right now. So we'll be meeting next week, and then we'll be uh, uh, we'll be skipping a week after that. And we will get your numbers as soon as we can. Oh, wait. So we're going to have a meeting next week? And uh, yes, yeah, so we will meet next week. We will not meet in two weeks. So it's a little different than our usual. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Have a good yep. week. Thanks, London. Thanks, Fair.